You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, our friends from Lutheran Church Extension Fund, Rahima Kavuga, Synod Relations Manager. Rahima, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thanks for having me. And Damian Farnworth, Content Manager for Lutheran Church Extension Fund. Damian, thanks for being our guest. Uh, You're welcome. Howdy, Sarah and Andy. (laughs) Howdy back at (laughs) you. Rahima, remind us of uh, LCEF's mission today. Well, LCF has been um, serving the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod for the last 40 years, um, which we are um, overjoyed to do. And we support the work of churches, um, church workers, schools, and organizations. Um, And what we do is very simple. We invite Lutherans to invest with us. And when you invest with us, um, you help to support the work of thousands of other LCMS individuals, schools, and organizations through low-cost loans and other um, ministry resources. And so we are very grateful for our investors um, who make this all possible. So how has LCEF been doing over the last several months with all uh, everything that has been going on? I know it has been uh, so crazy, but we are so thankful and God is always good in the midst of all of this. And so LCEF has been so excited and proud and humbled um, to be able to work with uh, 245 different ministries, um, helping them with a total loan balance of nearly $250 million um, with a deferral um, payment of over $1.3 million. So we were able to really connect with um, the LCMS uh, and serve them in that many ways. And through it all, we've uh, stayed strong and our investors um, have continued to support our work. So we are grateful for that and continue to pray for our church uh, through this interesting time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And Damien, uh, there is a magazine that maybe some of our listeners have received in their mailbox or um, maybe they've seen in their church called Interest Time. What is Interest Time? Great question. Uh, Interest Time is our magazine. It's uh, We try to publish about four times a year. It's around 24 to 32 pages. Um, our goal is to sort of uh, celebrate the good things that are going on um, in the Synod. Uh, we treat it as, you know, um, we tell stories about LCF um, borrowers and partners and stakeholders, but we also just explore, you know, kind of the great things um, about our uh, about our Lutheran faith and, and tradition. So what are some of the themes that you've touched upon in Interest Time over the years, Rahima? Yeah, so we've uh, done a variety of things, and I'm really excited for Damien to talk a little bit more about those. But we've highlighted a variety of topics such as Lutheran education. We've talked about stewardship, um, missionaries, um, RSOs, and um We've also done um, artwork and architecture of the Lutheran Church. So just a variety of things, as Damien said, um, we try to lift up um, all the wonderful things that are about the LCMS um, and take a a closer and uh, deeper dive into them. Damien, do you have a favorite story from Interest Time? I do. I think I have, well, you know, naturally a few, but the thing, the two that probably stand out at least one stands out there was one where we did a three-part series on emily wook um uh canter out uh i forget exact location um but but uh jenny miller wrote the story but followed her over three different times just kind of saw like the highs and lows of uh what it was like to be a, a church worker in her particular capacity and to kind of so the goal was to kind of again like i said celebrate the wonderful things about our synod and really particularly about those people who, you know, kind of put, peek in those, those, those corners that we may not normally explore. Um, so that was, that was Emily Wook was a uh, trooper with it, a fabulous person to do. She uh, also, we did a video of hers as well. Again, she says she was a total trooper and just a very good person to do that with. The other story was, again, this is why I love doing this, is a guy named Dale Vogt. He was... Um, uh, he was with uh, uh, an organization called Labors for Christ, and he was just kind of a foundational, like like sort of um, 
if you were to call him like the poster child, he was the poster child of Bill, of uh, uh, the Labors for Christ, and he he had such a story and it was so great just to kind of touch faith with him. He was older in life. I got to talk to his mom and I got to talk to, or not his mom, but his, 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 his a few of his children and stuff. And cause he was, he was um, having health issues at the time, but uh, just, just tremendous. I mean, be able to dig into these people's life like that. Tremendous, tremendous value. Very encouraging. How does interest time differ from some of the other LCMS publications that we have um, like the Lutheran witness and Lutherans engage? Yeah, so that's a great question too. Because uh, like when we first came at this, like the last thing we wanted to do was duplicate or you know sort of uh, uh, find ourselves crossing to other territories. So we try to we try to look at what we could do that wasn't being done out there. Not saying that you know because what they were doing was you know Lutheran witnesses, but very theologically oriented. Lutherans engage is very evangelistically oriented. And so we said, what can we do and sort of bring to the table? And so that's why we kind of look at the things like what are what are what is great and not look at it necessarily like give our theological interpretation of it or share things about, you know, really it was about what are I, the thing was I was coming trying to come to the stories that we are sharing with an outsider's perspective. Because I didn't grow up in the church, I came. I discovered Lutheranism late in life, and I was just sort of blown away. And I think, in a sense, where people who grow up in it may take those things for granted, where I saw, and I said, these are the kind of things I want to talk about. And so, hopefully, you know, hopefully, we kind of bring that perspective to it. If that makes sense. Rahima, do you have a favorite issue or issues? I mean, they're all really good. Um, Damien and his team do an outstanding job of. Uh, capturing a lot. Um, so before I worked at LCF, I was at uh, Concordia University, Nebraska, go Bulldogs. And um, <laughs> um, so one of the, the things that I really enjoy is um, that age range, and especially our youth. I've, I've done things with the LCMS uh, youth ministry um, as well. And so one of the first issues actually right after I started um, or right before I started at LCF was focusing on youth. And it was really, really cool to just um, get to see and hear from youth and, and those who work with them primarily about ways that they impact the church and how the church has impacted them. And, you know, really what Damien said about that outside perspective um, has really rang true. I also really enjoyed our last publication, which featured the architect, um, architecture and art um, within the church body and how that speaks to us because it is so um that that is so true um how when you go into church through worship um all the senses should be engaged and so this really took a look at the eyes and what you see around you um besides your bulletin to actually look up and pay attention to color and to form and to texture and to the story um that all brings it back to Christ um and so that was really neat and to to hear more um from Ed Rojas who um I enjoy his artwork and and things like that so I could probably talk about every single issue and say I love them all for a variety of reasons, but those are my top two for sure. <laughs> Damien, uh, can you talk more about the next issue of Interest Time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, this next issue is going to be, the theme is technology and how technology serves the church. And um so I think that we kind of came up with that theme before COVID hit, or maybe it was sort of like, you know, on the back burner, but then COVID hit and we thought we need to talk about this now. Um, and, and so like, so this next issue is going to be, you know, uh, what is technology exactly? How has, what role has it played in the church? Uh, it, has that been good or bad? What are the things that we have to, to be aware of? Um, what it's looked like? during COVID because, you know, naturally, even those people who are reluctant to use technology are, are being forced to do so now. Um, so we look at those things and, you know, talk to a couple of uh, people you may know, like uh, A. Trevor Sutton and Brian Wolfmuller, and then a few other, you know, people out there as well to get their takes on it. 
And with and, and the so usually with the, each issue, there's like a feature theme. And it's like this one, it's technology, and there'll be like a secondary uh, themed article. But then we always do stories about sort of LCF partners, and one of those is a really neat story in New Hampshire about the new Nar Narthex that, that uh, they designed and then built, and it was finished just in time for COVID, to where uh, when they started going back to services, they could actually do it because they had more space. They could do it six feet apart. And then the, there's another great story about uh, Grace Lutheran. Uh, I think it's in St. Port, Lucie, Florida, and a church that did not have any debt. The thing that they wanted to do that just kind of um, wouldn't be your normal natural thing to do when you're out of debt in order to serve their community. So those are the kind of stories that we look for to try to share and explain it and show other churches and ministries, what people are doing across the country. So how do you gather these stories? How do you go about getting these stories to share in interest time? Yeah, so I think oh, part of it is trying, like I said, um, coming as sort of an outsider to it, I, I'm always interested in like, what would be interesting to tell? Because I always believe that even though, and of course we hear this about the gospel as well, is like, even though we know it, we, we may take it for granted. I always think that like, how can we position or share it in such a way that says, look, remember this, this is a great thing. So I kind of look like at those things that maybe I want to learn about. Um, like for example, let's like when we did themes on like stewardship and uh, Lutheran education and um, the doctrine, the Lutheran doctrine of vocation, those were things that were new to me. So I wanted to explore those. Uh, so that's one way. But another thing is I just sort of look out, I have a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of people in the field and People come to me and they share, they share, like, here's what's going on in this, this, this district. And here's what's going on with this church. And so I kind of, uh, I gather those stories and then sort of look for those ones that have kind of a, an interesting um, angle to it. So that, 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 that we're not just sharing sort of this like every day, here's a church, they did a loan, they got the loan. And then now they're having a new narthex, you know, but it's more about like, what's the tradition? Cause again, like I want it to be about the great things that, have been going on, you know, with the Synod and that are going on. We have, we have a great tradition, a great faith. And so I just want to celebrate that. So. So this magazine started as a trifold newsletter. Is that right? Why, why did that change and how? Um, sort of a, kind of like what I just, just sort of uh, mentioned was this idea. We were a couple of years ago, we were given the opportunity to, Hey, this is what we've been doing. And so what we were doing before was essentially just kind of, saying this church got a loan from LCF, here's what they did, and that was it. But we were kind of challenged um, to say, hey, how can we make this something that people would actually want, you know, uh, not not just LCEF? Because because part of the goal is to sort of tell investors and show stakeholders, you know, with LCF, like here, here is, here's the good things that, that, that your investments are allowing to happen, right? Because that's the, that's the, the model under which LCF operates is that investors, and this is, you hear this all the time for our investors, they say, we love that our investment goes to help the church, you know, Lutheran churches and schools and stuff like that. So we wanted to tell that story, but really, you know, in a trifold newsletter, it wasn't much space to do that. And we were just kind of challenged, let's create something that would be attractive and that people would be, uh, proud. not to say the newsletter wasn't, but I mean, something, you know, above and beyond that people would be proud to, to leave on their a coffee table to share with friends in some way kind of make it a um a tool in which to share uh not just about lcf but about you know our, our lutheran faith rahima how can people subscribe to this magazine yeah it's really easy to do you can just go to interesttime.org um, and on that website, it's really great because you can see previous issues. Um, so we make this magazine, it is both digital and hard copy. So you can sign up to receive it one or both ways. As Damien said, I have all my issues on my coffee table and whenever people come to visit, which will hopefully be soon, um, they get the opportunity <laughs> to take a look at it that way. Um, but on interesttime.org, you can also take a look at some of those articles. Have um, We have videos that we've created that follow that same story that Damien was sharing. And so you can take a look at that or read a specific article um, and you can share it uh, with those in your community. So uh, I think the best part is it's all free, whether you do it digitally or get a hard copy. This is a free um, subscription. And so visit interesttime.org and sign up today. 
Our guest today, Rahima Kavuga, Synod Relations Manager for Lutheran Church Extension Fund. Rahima, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. And Damien Farnworth, Content Manager for Lutheran Church Extension Fund. Damien, thanks for joining us on the Coffee Hour. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Wow.